What's going on? This is TJ Murphy and welcome to another episode of Adventurous Entrepreneurs. My guest today is Franco Perez. Having grown up in a family with an unstable housing situation, Franco is on a mission to create affordable housing in Silicon Valley. He discovered that the Bay Area's mobile home parks offer an abundance of underused land with great growth potential. After years of dedication to his vision, Reiko has helped establish a devoted team of like-minded individuals who believe that their positive impact equals success. Inspired to reimagine mobile homes and expand affordable housing opportunities across the Bay, Franco's talented team strives to unlock the pathway to home ownership and help families establish financial security where it might otherwise seem impossible, especially in this time of the pandemic. Beyond his drive to develop cost-effective housing, Franco also enjoys videography, showcasing some of his favorite local restaurants and local small businesses, and promoting San Jose's unique culture to the world. Just a few of the golden takeaways Franco Perez shares on this episode are how he is changing perceptions of mobile homes into gateways for home ownership and financial freedom, building a business with impact, the role of video in promoting a company, and life lessons from traveling the world. So without further ado, this is me and Franco Perez. Welcome to the Adventurous Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Murphy. Since quitting my corporate nine to five and starting a business while backpacking through Asia back in early 2017, I've had the privilege of learning from some incredibly adventurous entrepreneurs. Through these conversations and my own journey, I've learned that much like in life, entrepreneurship is an adventure. On this podcast, I explore the journeys of top performing leaders in their fields. These wide ranging conversations include tactical business advice, how I built this insights, lessons in leadership, life hacks, travel stories, favorite hobbies, and insights into living a purposeful and joy-filled life. Adventures await us, so let's dive in. Hey, Franco, welcome to Adventurous Entrepreneurs, man. Thanks for having me, TJ. Super excited to be here. Dude, pumped for this. It's going to be a fun conversation, and I'd love to just start with a bit of background on the journey. Could you share with us like the most pivotal moment from your childhood in the Philippines to moving to the States that that shaped who you are today and set you down this path toward empowering people's lives? Sure. Um, I guess, you know, a bit about my childhood in the Philippines. It was really interesting that I got to kind of experience child, uh, a bit of my childhood in the Philippines. And um, one is it's, you know, it really shapes the perspective of how I perceive things here in America too, right? He, he, I remember back in the Philippines, it's like, you know, we didn't have the greatest housing situations. Food quality wasn't, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of health standards and that sort of thing. But for some weird reason, everyone there was so happy, so joyful of life, so appreciative and so grateful for what they had, even though what they had was nothing, right? And that alone, I think, was a huge mindset shift for me um you know coming here with people roofs over the heads tons of government support tons of high quality standards and and people find a reason to be stressed about life sometimes and i think that's something to, there's something to be said about that and that's why i make it a point to travel there to refresh my mind too and 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 look at things with a positive outlook but I know that was a tangent, but, uh, but anyways, mo moved from an immigrant family over here as a, at a young age with uh, my mom, my dad, and my younger sister, and was put in a weird, unfortunate situation where my parents split up. My dad was a main breadwinner. At 17, 18 years old, I had to stop going to school and start working multiple jobs just to gather enough money just at the end of the month to be able to afford rent. And I still remember gathering coins and selling off things, even with the two jobs, how difficult it was to just keep up at the end of every month with that rat race of just not knowing if we'll make that final payment or not, right? And I say that because I know for a fact that today there's people going through that, even if they might not seem like it, they're probably in that housing situation now, right? And um, from there, I became a real estate agent. I did that for a while, um, did pretty well at it, but then I kind of realized it's I didn't love it. I 
I realized I was put in a place to try to help the wealthiest people I could help get the most expensive properties that they can and help the rich get richer. And unfortunately, the part that I hated most about it was having to tell people uh, that I knew that were in my shoes back then. And I had to say, hey, unfortunately, you don't make enough money. You don't have enough as a down payment saved. You don't really have a chance at getting anything in this area. You can either move out of the area or you can try to save more and make more. And then I'd be able to help you later down the line. That hurt me so much. And I, I took a break from being a real estate agent and tried to find a way to help those of low income. And how do we help create a stepping stone in helping those families, right? And went into government housing, didn't like that. And accidentally stumbled across mobile homes and come to find out what I thought mobile homes were, were like trailer trash, you know, filled with drug dealers, bad quality homes, because that's what I saw in the media. But the reality of it was, is that there's actually a ton of mobile home parks out there and we don't know about it. And it's when you go into these communities, they're actually great places where families are getting their home start. It's really the start of, a low-income family being able to feel financially secure and a place for families to start their wealth building journey should they choose to. Um, so we built a business around helping educating people about how this works, how it helps society, how it helps families get out of that rental rat race, start their homeowner journey through mobile homes by buying a mobile home and then transitioning into single family homes and the last part of that is we now convert a lot of old stock mobile homes, turning old single wides into large, luxurious 1,800 square foot homes with 12 foot high ceilings, quartz countertops, stainless steel uh, appliances, and, you know, to now what we call sexy mobile homes, which really they are, really they are sexy. <laughs> They're so, cool. Yeah, and that's where we're at today. So I know that was long, but uh Oh man, it's 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 incredible. And I love the I love the journey that you were on and, and the mission behind what you're doing, keeping people in the communities that they want to be in, you know, a place where they can really step into home ownership and, and raise a family and, and create that legacy that their family can benefit from for for generations to come in theory. It all has to start somewhere. And when you're in that rat race and you're looking for where you're going to be able to find the money to pay your rent check, you never can get into that cycle of being able to build wealth. So I love how you're reversing the stigma around mobile homes and showing that this is actually a great opportunity for home ownership for people that you know are, are in a position of being a little less fortunate, but they're still able to own and, and get into a home that they can make their own and, and grow wealth around. And your story, man, it's so applicable you know being in a situation of of housing instability having to be in that rat race yourself and and learn man how to grind i'm sure your your work ethic today was kind of born out of that hard work you had to put in working two jobs selling stuff off scraping coins together to to pay rent so definitely want to dig in a little more there but first what's what's going on at, at franco mobile homes here in January of 2024, we're coming up at the end of the month. You kind of mentioned some of the things that you're focused on. Is there anything new coming down the pipeline this year? Anything you're really excited about at the company? Yeah. I mean, one is our expansion to SoCal. Um, you know, we're mainly in the Silicon Valley um, and we have, we have planned to, we're partially in LA and San Diego with projects there, but we really want to grow this. Um, you know, our agenda really is just awareness about how valuable this is and how important it is to society. And whether they go through us or whether it's another entity, our goal has always just been not about profits, not about money, but how do we help more families out there? So part of what we're doing is we're talking about what we do on podcasts like yours, and then also do a lot of government lobbying to help support this. How do we get better financial backing for this product? How do we get government entities to help people uh, have home starts in these communities? Because I see where the world is going, and and it's not a pretty thing with con with housing prices going so high, with construction getting more difficult. There's this wealth gap that's already there, and 
it's getting worse and worse. And to me, this is the most important thing for me to keep the availability or the opportunity for the American dream of home ownership available to those that that are of low income and keeping that opportunity available to the ordinary people, right? So um, really just putting mobile homes on the map, whether it's through us or anyone else, just so that they understand what this really is. Amazing, man. And I'm excited to hear that that you are doing some of the lobbying. And you know, I was just listening to like NPR the other day and they were talking about a situation that's pretty, pretty common across the country. Like you own your mobile home, but in most cases, the land you're you're leasing from the the property managers of that mobile home park. And a lot of that is owned through private equity. There's maybe some people that are very profit driven and in the ownership position and not focused on the purposeful work that you're doing. And so prices are going up. And for a lot of communities, especially ones where, you know, maybe it's a 55 and up community where people are living on social security, every time that that land payment, that rent goes up, you know, it's it's getting to a point where they can't afford to live there anymore. And mm-hmm. then trying to sell a home in that situation could be very challenging. Is there is there anything you would share in relation to that issue? Yeah. Is it something that you <laughs> you deal yeah. with often? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of positive out of all of this. You know, one is most situations in most gov- most states, there is a sense of rent control and, and and there's a sense of protecting values of these homeowners, right? So one is getting the right information, getting the right education about how this is going to be a helpful tool. Um, but in the gist is like, hey, what's your situation now? How do we better you your personal cash flow? What's better than the other, right? And and I can dive into um, kind of like housing in our area too, if that's helpful for residents and kind of how mobile homes put a play. Um, but basically, if you're renting, um, actually, I'm going to say some numbers here, but this is in Silicon Valley. It's more expensive than most other areas, but understand the ratios are about the same, uh, but the cost might be different, right? So in our area, if a family of four wanted to rent a two-bedroom apartment, it could cost about $3,500 a month, right? Which is already very high to keep up with rent. And if um, when you're renting, guess what? Five years down the line, whatever, you end up with nothing at the end of it. That's 100% loss, Right. Now, we all understand kind of the benefits of home ownership, right? There's, you get to leverage a loan to build up your net worth, you get appreciation, your your equity goes up, and you also get a ton of tax benefits too, right? And what comes with that also is financial security. But it has a big barrier of entry to be able to afford a single family home. In our area, an average single family home, 1,500 square foot, three, two, uh, three bedroom, two bath, would cost about $1.5 million, which is a huge leap to go from renting into single family home ownership. Now, if they wanted to put 10% down, that's $150,000 you'd have to save up. And you're looking at a payment of more than $7,000 a month, right? How does someone ever dream of one day being a homeowner when that's the big leap in, that you have to overcome, right? And what's beautiful about mobile homes is that it's a hybrid of ownership in between, right? Yes, you are paying a space rent. You don't own the land. You pay, um, in our area, about 1000 or 1100 a month for the space rent, but you do own the asset above. And it's important that people understand the asset above um, and how it's evaluated and what how you can finance it to, to your benefit. Basically, an average newer home Newer mobile home in our area is about $350,000. 10% down of that is $35,000, which is much more attainable and realistic. And their their mortgage on that would be about $2,800, $2,900. So let's say 1,000 space rent, $2,900. You're shifting to your total monthly payment to only about $4,000 a month, which is just a little bit more than if you were renting an apartment. However, your personal cash flow is working more towards you because you're paying less 
on the rent and you're paying towards an asset that you own, you're getting those benefits of home ownership, you're leveraging a loan to purchase something that's an asset, you get the tax benefits, and also these homes are appreciating in value. And now just by shifting your model from rent to mobile home ownership, we have families that are way more financially secure. We have teachers that are able to, to own homes in our areas and low-income families can, can make that step from renting into home ownership. And later down the line, they can sell this and then be able to afford single family homes. And that's the key of how this is a bridge and how it's a stepping stone for people to get out of that rat race. And we have to protect that. And we have to uh, understand it as a society that this is an option too. Yeah, man. I love how you break that down. It's it's easy to understand how somebody you know, would want to take that opportunity and, and run with it if they're in a situation where they can afford to do so. And I'm curious, because you mentioned earlier how you even didn't have a, a good perception of, of what mobile homes were, right? Kind of yeah. trash, et cetera. And you put out great content. You do an awesome job of the storytelling behind everything that you do. And a big piece of that is, is breaking that stigma. And I'm curious, can you walk us through how you thought about transforming the image of mobile homes from derelicts of uh, trailer trash, whatever people might call it to, you yeah. know, a very, a very great bridge to home ownership and also that they could be sexy while still being affordable. Absolutely. And and thanks for that. It's a great compliment for someone that's in marketing like you. So that, appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the truth is, is that most of the general public, they're only association with mobile home parks are from the movies and from TV. So that's their general assumption of what this is, right? And we decide, you know, we realize that, you know, I'm, or I realize that I'm sick of trying to explain to people that, hey, this doesn't look like what you think it is, or, hey, this isn't a, a criminal place like it used to be, you know, like what people think it is. But the truth of it is, is that we fight it, um, or first, I kind of explain that it's kind of like apartments. There's bad quality apartments with crim criminals and that sort of thing, but there's luxury style apartments as well, right? And there's a full spectrum. And it's the same with mobile home parks. There are bad communities out there, but there's a full spectrum. And there's communities with, with tennis courts, golf courses, swimming pools, saunas, gyms, and, you know, and such a beautiful place for people to live and kids to run around. But our battle against that stigma was only through video. That's how we realized the only way people are going to actually believe what we're saying, right? They have to see it yeah. to believe yeah. it. And, yeah. you know, if you think about it, all the younger generations today, that's how they process information. And that's how we have to change these stigmas are through video. And just like we said earlier, is our campaign was sexy mobile homes and we show on our channel, on our YouTube, what um, what mobile homes are, how they're being built today, what these communities look like. We do parked several park tours of how beautiful the streets are, how there's kids and neighbors, you know, uh, meeting each other, sense of community, and we also tell stories of the individuals in these communities. Hey, what's it like living here? How has this helped you be able to start a business of your own? How has this been able to help this teacher just keep her passion of being a teacher in this area when teachers are often being moved out of expensive areas? Um, and then also, you know, showcasing the beauty of what the homes actually look like and showing our our mission and um, our team and, and their successes as well. Um, but to answer your question, it's through video, and that's really what's helped us grow. Um, through that. Yeah, it's awesome. And like doing my research to, to have this conversation with you, it's easy to pick up on the fact that you have a passion for, for storytelling and especially through video. So I love how you articulated how you've been able to align both passions and your mission for helping empower home ownership for people with, you know, a hobby and something that you love to do and are really good at doing through video storytelling. And clearly that has, has just created tons of synergy in your business and allowed you to promote the, the mission of your work. So kudos to you on that. I love seeing it. I love seeing the passion behind it. And kind of in that same vein of, of taking two seemingly different worlds and bringing them together, 
how do you balance the the commercial aspects of your business? You know, you're you're in business to to make money at the end of the day, but you've got the social mission of affordable housing and and empowering people with home ownership. Can you talk a little bit about either how you how you think about that, how you've structured your business to to be oh. able to achieve both. Yeah, you know what's fascinating with that question is that I've never I never wanted to be a business owner actually and 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 it was never really a passion of mine, right? And I think that's where I'm a bit different is from my first transaction that I ever helped someone go into buying a mobile home. I still remember it vividly. It's, it was a family of four that was renting a bedroom of someone's house. Super humbly, humble, super humble, hardworking family. And they told me like, hey, all these agents have denied me. I just really need to buy something and whatever. And we got them into buying their first mobile home. And it wasn't a pretty home. It was, you know, it was an older home at the time and whatever. But they had so much tears of joy. Like this is the first thing that they've ever been able to have as an asset. And they knew that they were going to be more financially secure because of this. And that energy right there and that feeling of knowing that, man, this is like, this is going to make a huge impact for this low income, this hardworking family for generations. And to me, I've never been about money, but I've always been about creating an impact. And I still tear up today thinking about that. And I still tear up when I often see these families that um, that have that same feeling. But to me, that is the best compensation I can ever receive over any commission, over any profit or any of that, right? Yeah. And to me, that's been the driver of us building something sustainable so that we can repeat this to happen over and over again with hundreds of families now. Right. And to keep that going. And it all went through being resourceful to make that happen. I didn't go through any formal college. I didn't um, I didn't have parents that had business experience. And, you know, because of that strong why, like you said, it's what got me to want to actually read books when I hate reading books to actually learn and listen to uh, listen to podcasts I didn't want to listen to and meet people that I wanted that I didn't want to that I was afraid of meeting right but it was that that really got us to where we're at and um, yeah I think it's important for people to find that because I didn't I still today often say this that we aren't in this to make money we are in this to create a difference and create an impact for so many lives um, but yeah we put the pieces together from there yeah, I love it. It's it's so clear. Like when the why is greater than than everything else, you find a way, right? You sacrifice and do the things you maybe don't want to do or you, you don't enjoy doing, like reading the books and, and going out and and networking and meeting people, but you've got that drive behind it. And it's so clear just from your story and like the conviction and passion in the way you talk about this, that that, that why is is what guides you. And you've already shared a, some good advice for people. You know, it's important to dig into your why behind anything that you're doing. But for people specifically who are listening to this, they're aspiring entrepreneurs or, or they're already in a venture and they're looking to make a social impact and, and go beyond just profits. They want to they help people. What advice would you give the people that are looking to make that connection? I think um, understanding value, that's a good question. Um, I, I'd say... You know, first is is finding some, that why and, and, you know, understanding how you can make a difference, understanding how you can fix problems. But I think it really comes down to also um, being resourceful as well. Like, how do you how do you realize and come up with this intuition that it's not those that are making that have a bunch of backed resources and backed money that are succeeding, but those that are really resourceful with their resources right um i think that's that's something that's helped me succeed it's hard for me to to speak on how do you find your why because i went through a hard time <laughs> and that's kind of what what got me to that so I, I don't know that i can really help someone find something that they can create an impact for but i will say that once you find that thing it'll be much better than 
than than trying to figure out something just to make money out of it. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It's no one can prescribe your why. You have to you have to dig deep and, and find it yourself. And I think when it works out the best, it it finds you. That realization is is just there, and it becomes that aha moment where you realize the path that you need to go down to achieve that purpose. So I think your story is a good illustration of, of how that came to life for you. And there's definitely insights to be teased out from that. So Franco, this is a, it's a podcast about entrepreneurship, but one of the biggest hurdles that that we all face, but certainly most successful entrepreneurs face at one time or another is living a well-rounded life and, and doing the things that we love to do with the people that we care about most. And I always ask people, what, what does that look like for you? How are you able to find balance with what I'm sure is a very heavy time commitment in your purposeful work and your, your company, but also being able to do the things that, that fill you up and, and spending time with people that you care about? Yeah. You know, um, I think it's it all happened in different phases for me. You know, when I first started my business, literally from waking, from waking up to to late nights, super late nights, um, it was working hard as 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 much as I can. But I think to that that when you mentioned balance or that sort of thing, I think it's there's a lot of conversation about balance. But for me, you know, I started stop. I started to stop thinking about myself and starting to think that who I want to be known for when I pass, right? And I feel like knowing that I've made an impact for families and housing, that's something to be known for. And, but I guess finding that balance is also understanding joy in what you're doing and realization that what you're doing is going to make a difference. And also with that, working with amazing people around you, everyone that our company I feel like I'm proud of, and I feel like are great, caring people. Um, and, you know, it brings me joy to to grow more caring people, to be able to help more people, and it becomes this ripple effect, right? I enjoy working with the people I work with, and we enjoy helping the clients and the families. We get very personal with the families that we help. And to me, that brings joy, right? But Outside of that, I didn't really have uh, a family life or a, or a ton of friend time. But now that we are kind of stable, I'm starting to do more of that, of course. And uh, But, you know, when you are going through that business building mode, I think it is important to to continue to grind and, and not worry a, too much about, you know, am I enjoying life, but realize that, hey, this might be my version of enjoying life is working hard to create an impact. Yeah, absolutely, man. There's a season season for everything. And especially in the beginning, it, it is crucial. You got to put in the work. And especially if you can align that with the why and the purpose, that work becomes a lot easier. And those long days that that you put in, it's easier to, to lay down at the end of the day and know you did, did good work and be proud of yourself and, and happy for what you've accomplished. So- yeah. Franco, as we wrap things up, I have a, a choose your own adventure question for you. So you can pick which one you'd like to answer or both if you so desire. But the first is what's a favorite place you visited in the past few years? Um, or second, like what is just a recent adventure you went on? So either, you know, a trip or even in your own community, your own backyard, doing something with with friends or family. Give us a story about, about some exciting adventure that you went on and in, in either... Oh. So what made it memorable? Who were you with? Maybe a favorite meal or drink you had, a lesson you learned along the way. Give us a story. Yeah. So one that comes to mind is, you know, one, one part of our team, actually, you know, now, now looking back, I think I am very strong on enjoying life and it's very important to travel and really take the time to enjoy life. And we always, part of what drives our team is we set goals and if we hit them, we make sure we sp take the time to enjoy life and that sort of thing. But last year we had this goal to, it was an audacious goal to hit X amount of homes and we hit it and we took the team to Tomorrowland in Europe and yeah. it was just a great experience. And, you know, we were like, forget all the, we were able to just let go of all the work we had, escape, 
and just really just travel together and have a great time. And, and to me, it was more about um, the people around and, and, you know, they deserve this great time for all the hard work they've put and all the difference that they've made in lives. But I do think, you know, Hey, grind for like 11 months or whatever, and then take, you know, uh, take three weeks or whatever to take a break and re-energize all that you've achieved. Exactly. And then I actually want to answer the other last question, but I did travel also with our team recently or two of our team to Vietnam. And I loved Vietnam. It gave me that same energy of like perspective and everything. You know, sometimes I'll live in this country and I'll, 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 I'll tend to forget that whole gratefulness element. And, and when you go to countries like Vietnam or Philippines, you really tend to see like the life, the world is really all about perspective and you you become like who you're surrounded by. And when you go back to these, when you go to these places and you see their perspective, you turn, you tend to realize like, wow, I have so much more to be grateful for than I realized that I had. Right. And then with that, you go to these countries and they're super, super grateful for what they don't have from what, for what little that they have. And, and Vietnam, I really felt that energy and everyone's hardworking and super happy too. Yeah, dude. Perspective is everything. It makes me so happy that you're you're taking your team and, and having these amazing experiences. Tomorrowland has always been on my list to, to go to. So love yeah. to hear that. Definitely want to check it out someday. But I couldn't agree more on, on traveling and just the perspective that it brings. I spent about 14 months backpacking through Southeast Asia, visiting the Philippines and, and Vietnam with my wife. And it was exactly what you said. You know, people that are just so happy, so humble, so grateful for everything around them, and also grateful for the things that that aren't in their lives. And for us coming from, you know, such a place of, of privilege and, and abundance, like an overabundance in so many areas of our lives, being able to just disconnect from that for such an extended period of time. I never really reflected on gratitude up until that point. And now that's something that I try to build into my day, even if it's just a small reflection or, or reaching out to someone and, and sharing some gratitude. It's, it's such a powerful force. So being able to have that kind of aha moment through travel, I think is something that everybody should get to experience in their lives. So cool that you're able to do that with your team. Yeah. I'm glad you went through that with, with your wife as well. So yeah, that's man. awesome. Yeah, dude. So any ask challenge or, or parting advice for people listening in? Man, I feel like we gave enough, huh? No, I, just, <laughs> no, I, uh, I think that, I think kind of back to that is like, like, you know, I think there's a lot of noise out there around making X amount a month and that sort of thing. But I really urge people to kind of take another perspective and see how they can build something that will really improve someone's life. I think, um, you know, that's something that's really drove me and and hopefully there's someone out there that might feel like pressured to, try to go into Amazon or whatever to these these websites are saying to do, but instead finding something where they can help people. Yeah, I agree, man. I think when you when you have a why and a purpose that is built around providing value and, and helping people, the the money will come. You know, you'll you'll find that level of success if you're helping enough people and doing it in the right way. So good advice. And Franco, where can people connect, support you, reach out for, for your services? What are, what's the best place to connect? Oh yeah. Thanks. I, um, all of our links are at www.franco.tv. If you haven't seen what these homes are and you really kind of want to see what it is visually, you can see 3d tours there and you can see how they're built. We really dive into like the construction of it and that sort of thing. If you're into that, but our team does a great job on, on our YouTube channel. So definitely check that out if you haven't. Yeah, I'll put links to that in the show notes so everyone can find you. And trust me, guys and gals, like you got to check it out. I went down the rabbit hole and, and just watched so many videos. And it's incredible the transformations and the homes that you guys are, are putting people into. So I highly recommend that. And dude, grateful for you joining me today. This was an awesome conversation. So much value in here. So I appreciate your time and everything that you're doing, man. Oh, appreciate that. And I think what you're doing is amazing as well. I mean, you're sharing stories. It's going to inspire people as well. So thanks for what you're doing too. 
To all of our adventurous listeners, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share this on social media or with someone you know will get some value from it. Leaving a review goes a long way in helping people find the show. And I personally appreciate reading them when they come in. So please go drop one if you have the time. We'll see you all next week. And remember, whether we're talking about business or the things that bring us joy outside of work, life is meant for exploring. So go out there and live it one adventure at a time.